All right, everybody, welcome back. So, yet again, you know, the Dreamcast just celebrated its 20th anniversary. And after reading the first Sega Dreamcast magazine, uh, issue zero from June, I figured we need to look at the launch one, the issue that came out the same month as the Dreamcast, and take a look. Uh, my favorite part about looking at these magazines is that sometimes you run into old games you completely forgot about that you either played for a little bit or saw a photo and always wanted to play. And this is kind of a nice way to rediscover some of those old um, games that you thought of then that you always wanted to get. But, you know, being a kid at the time, for a lot of you, you could only get games when it was Christmas, birthday, things like that. So, let's take a look and uh, see what we have. All right, so right off the bat, we have the cover. Now, 19 games at launch. That's pretty awesome, considering that the Switch had, what, three games? Now, do they consider those 19 games at launch day of? Uh, I forget. We'll have to see. 56K modem, yet again, like the last issue. That wasn't really a big selling point. For some people, it might have been, but this was still the early days. Now you'd think, I hope you have connection to the Internet. 128-bit graphics. Gotta love 128 bits. Definitely the most powerful at the time. Sonic Adventures. If you bought a Dreamcast Day 1, I hoped you had that game. I would imagine you were a Sonic fan if you were a Sega fan. All right. Ooh. Right off the bat, we have Ready to Rumble Boxing. Now, I'm sure everybody that's watching has had a game that they've never owned, played at a friend's house, and loved it, but could never go out and buy it or just... You never needed to because you're like, oh, it gives me a reason to go to my friend's house even more. And that was kind of one of these games. Uh, I never owned Ready to Rumble Boxing, but I still remember the first time I played it, I was amazed with how fun it was, um, the graphics. They don't look like much now. You know what? They still hold up, it looks like. Uh, but it was fun and entertaining. And to this day, I still don't even own the game. So that's kind of a – that's on that's a list check. Got to put that on my list of uh, games to look into. All right, next up, we meet again. All right, another little sit down and talk about um, the Dreamcast and its magazine. All right, now this is the first page most people always wanted to go to to find out what we're going to be reading about. So DC Direct uh, prepares you for the launch of the, Ninten uh, the Nintendo, the Sega and its peripherals, uh, the mail, Fantasy Zone, that's RPG news, coin-op news, arcade zone. Let's see. So we have coming soon the preview zone. We have Virtual Fighter 3 TB, Sega Rally 2, Sega Sports NBA 2K, Code Veronica, Castlevania, Slave Zero, Test Drive 6, Shamu. Mm hmm. Yeah, and if you watched my last uh, Let's Read on the first, or issue zero, yeah, they showed pictures for Shamu that was for the game Shamu 2. So I guess that really does mean that they had Shamu 2. Pretty much done with Shamu 1, but needed to cut it for a second game. Probably to make some money, more money. All right, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Toy Commander. That's an awesome game. Um, Sega Bass Fishing, Soul Fighter. Which, doesn't that become Soul Calibur? Or am I thinking of the wrong game? Maybe thinking of the wrong game. Echo the Dolphin, MSR, V8, Climax Lander, Dynamite Cop, and Foreign Brothers. See, Climax Lander again. I don't remember that game at all. And when I read the last issue, I was kind of uh, thinking the game never came out. But apparently it must. All right. The features. The D-Day. A survival ga guide. Dreamcast 101. All right. Let's move on to the next page. The D-Mail. You know, I used to like watching this when watching this. Reading these sections after I've read the whole magazine. And I kind of want to just go back through. Because, you know, those days you'd bring your magazine to school. And... You read the first, the whole thing in, you know, the first period or the first break and then still have it for the rest of the day. So might as well go read all the articles. Uh, we will not be doing that today. Moving on. Fighting Force 2. Uh, I remember getting this game for the PlayStation and I liked it. Um, I don't know if it'd hold up well today, but I should go back and try it. Ooh, the big thing about Dreamcast, the GD ROMs that, yeah. That was a backfire for them. Basically, everyone can copy their own games onto regular CDs and make them. They probably should have just did something different. Okay. 
Zero Hour 9999. Yes. Blue Stinger. Great game, like I said in the last article. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a great little kind of open world-ish feeling game. Um, it was linear, but you felt like you were walking around a town in a place. The game on state-of-the-art web-ready technology, 19 amazing launch titles. So we have the lineup. At the time of writing, the following games were confirmed for September 9th. If some don't appear, don't call us. Okay. So the platform, Sonic Adventures. For the fighting, we have Soul Calibur, Ready to Rumble Boxing, Mortal Kombat Gold, Power Stone, Marvel vs. Capcom, Kings of Fighter Dream Match 99, Racing. We have Hydro Thunder, Trick Style, uh, TNN Motorsports, okay, Hardcore Heat, Tokyo Extreme Racer, Monaco Grand Prix, Flag to Flag. The sports are NFL Blitz 2000, all right, NFL 2K. We have House of the Dead 2, Blue Stinger, Air Force Delta, and Armada. Now, I have to say that that is a pretty good lineup. I would have to go on the lines of saying that Without looking at any of the lineups that I can think of, that is probably one of the best, like, all-around um, launch lineup for game consoles. Like, so, for most fans, getting a Dreamcast, you probably had a game or two that you really wanted. Where, you know, with the Nintendo Switch, we had Breath of the Wild. Which, let's be honest, if you're a Nintendo fan, you know, one and two of you probably want to play Legend of Zelda. But, it is nice to have other games to want to play. You had that with the Dreamcast. That is a great lineup. I mean, for me, right off the bat, if I was buying this console for launch, and this was September 9th, and I walked in and I had the money, let's be honest, the Dreamcast, obviously. Sonic Adventures, obviously. Uh, Soul Calibur, definitely would have picked up. Uh, Ready to Rumble Boxing, now I would pick that up now. Uh, I probably wouldn't have thought about it as a kid. Mortal Kombat Gold, probably would have picked it up, and it would have been fun. Uh, Power Stone would have looked intriguing, and I still want to play that game. Still never played it. Marvel vs. Capcom, Capcom definitely would have picked that up. Kings of Fighter, mm, that would have been a rental. Hydra Thunder, definitely. Um, I loved that game when I got that. Tokyo Extreme Racer, really enjoyed that. And then NFL Blitz or 2K, I wouldn't have been disappointed with either one. House of the Dead 2, for sure. Blue Stinger, yes. Right there, that's a handful of games that I would have enjoyed buying on launch day. So, that is good. All right, so let's see what they have to say. If you're reading this, chances are that you're already bought or are planning to buy Sega's stunning new machine. The good news is that you are made the right choice. Yes, yes, for the few people, we made the right choices. Well done. Much as it normal, normally hurts to plunk down 200 big ones for anything, this time you can... Rest assured that you've picked the ultimate game machine. You know what? Back then, when you saw $200, yeah, with inflation, it's probably equal to what consoles cost now. But back then, even for $199, it's like, all right, that's what I expect the consoles to cost. And for us old people, it still hurts when you say, oh, $399 for a console. It's like, ugh. Even though it's probably pretty close to what it costs now. So for $199, on September 9th, 1999, you can go home with the world's first internet-ready console, with a built-in modem and demos of your most technically advanced console games ever. I love demos. Uh, I wish more demo discs would get put in the mail. I mean, granted, most games you can just download the demos now, but it's just something about having them right there and ready to go. With pre-orders already over 250,000, it's the first console to launch with a firmly installed user base. And at launch terms, has already crushed the initial success of the Sony PlayStation. Now, of course, they're trying to do that. All right, so what do they say? The solid gold. Three games you simply must buy. Sonic Adventure, NFL 2K, and Soul Calibur. You know what? To be honest, I can't disagree. Uh, you know, a lot of people enjoy sports games. A lot of people enjoy fighters. And a lot of people enjoy platformers. Those three are solid choices that if you enjoy any one of those three types, you're going to be fine. If you don't enjoy any of those three types, then maybe it's not a solid gold. But I would imagine most people would enjoy it. So what do we get in the box? We get the Dreamcast. You get a controller, com component, composite AV cables, power cord, instruction manual, Dreamcast Passport with software. All right. So what do we get on the demo disc? So even if you can only afford one game at launch, you'll have a collection of superb demos 
ready to boot up. Now, I wish all consoles still did this, or at least the magazines. You know, you get a new console, give them a demo disc right off the bat of, like, the high-profile games that are coming out in the next couple months. Uh, when I got my Switch, there weren't that many demos I could download that I enjoyed. Um, I kind of wish, you know, s Nintendo was like, all right, we know we can't give you that. Here is eight really good demos to download and try. So on this playable demo, we have Sonic Adventure, which is, well, I guess if you didn't buy Sonic at the launch, Ready to Rumble, uh, Monaco Grand Prix, The Power Stone, House of the Dead 2, Flag the Flag, and Sega Bass Fishing. Okay, and then you had the movies, uh, NFL 2K, NBA 2K, Hydro Thunder, and NFL Blitz 2000. So right off the bat, you can try a couple of their launch games and see if you like it. So that's enjoyable. All right, next page. Hands-on, so the peripherals. Boy, did third-party companies know how to make some weird-looking controllers back then. All right, they still kind of do. But I had the blue one. I remember that because they were cheaper to buy. Uh, I never had a fighting stick. I have the controller. I had an, I have another um, blaster gun. Uh, man, that quantum fighter pad whew, or the radius racing pad, that's uh, some, some pads. All right, what do we got on the next page? Home Alone, MGK Shines Again. Um, I always wanted to play that. And I think I ended up playing it years later. I was confused. So I don't really have fond memories of uh, if I enjoyed that game or if I disliked it. But I do remember just not being totally sold. Okay, what do we get next? Red Alert. Uh, Disky Business? What is this? Dreamcast is an endless, endless expandable beast. And to prove it, uh, iOmega's clever zip disk technology will be wrestling snugly underneath America's systems next year in the shape of a rewritable re drive for the Sega. Okay. Um, initially as a means for storing saved games, emails, and media clips, this device will essentially be called into play for downloading game updates and demos from the web. Each disk will hold up to 100 megabytes of information. Let's just hope it doesn't go towards unwanted spam mail. We'll have details to this add-on peripheral as they release. Currently, we have we have zipped. Huh. Honestly, it won't look anything like this. Uh, who exactly chose this picture? Uh, I don't remember reading anything about that. Uh, did that even ever come out? I'll have to look into it. All right. So what do we got next on this page? Uh, VMU, awesome. Ooh, nice Shamu figure. That's cool. Some Sega gear, Sonic toys. Basically trying to sell you on money. Whoa, a little too fast. Let's, let's, okay, here we go. Sonic TV Adventures. His hedgehogginess spins back onto afternoon TVs. I used to love Sonic Adventures. Um, that was awesome. Never got into Sonic Underground, uh, but it didn't seem bad. I mean, it had tons of episodes, so it must be so good. Hot Pocket. A Neo Geo fits in your pocket if you were wear baggies. Why are we... Why are they promoting Neo Geo on the Sega Dreamcast? Okay. The handheld gaming market may be fiercely competitive in Japan, but in the U.S. it's only starting to heat up. SNK's 16-bit Neo Geo Pocket Color recently went on sale and features colored graphics and already estimated lineup of over 10 games. Ooh. But the Pocket Classic has more than power and dazzle on its side, thanks to a special link cable. Echoing the trend towards interconnectivity in the console market, the handheld can now be connected to a Dreamcast. Really? SNK has already announced the release of the latest in its long-running Kings of Fighter franchise for Neo Geo Pocket Color as the King of Fighter and Dreamcast. The link cable works by ex uploading the da download scores and characters from one version to the other, which is sure to make work brilliantly for the game's special making mode. This allows you to create a character and earn items to trade and swap between versions. Huh. Wow. I mean, I guess it makes sense because at that point, Neo Geo was just making the pocket. They weren't making home consoles, I believe. So I guess it's okay to team up with another company if you don't compete in the same market. Kind of like Xbox and Nintendo right now with their games. Uh, so yeah. Alright. I guess it's uh, Sega's version of the uh, Game Boy Advance Link Cable for the GameCube. And yet again, some more ads for, you know, Sega's weird ad campaign. TNT Hardcore Heat. Now, when I saw this game as a kid, I'm like, uh, you mean that TV network that no one watches? 
from where I live, TNT was not a f fun channel to watch. I think it turns into Spike at one point. Okay, so now here we have DC Japan. Bouncing back, flash fishy business. So, what do we got? Nothing really. So they're kind of showing us the games from outside the country. Hmm, all right. Nothing that would have caught my attention. Let's see. The first go anywhere, grab anything, fighting game on the planet, Power Stone. Ooh, yes. Okay. I've always wanted to play this game. Um, saw it many times at Toys R Us for good prices and just decided never to buy it. Ah, what a shame. All right. What do we have next? Planet in the Flames. Sega introduces Project Ares to the world. Fantas Fantasy Star 5, it's certainly not. But the core team responsible for the Star series, with the exception of the invisible Fantasy Star 3 Generations, has a brand new baby on the way. Tentatively named Project Ares, announced at the recent new challenges. Uh, both virtual and concept of feature. So is this... Ooh. Hey, is this... Uh, the game takes place in the Renaissance era of exploration, as opposed to the futuristic fantasy set in the most RPGs. This nugget of information brings to the new images figures like Shakespeare. Huh. Is this uh supposed to be the early stages of um Skies of Acadia? Cause the ships flying to the skies. Yeah, this looks like Skies of Acadia. That's pretty awesome. Project Ares. Alright, what do we have next? The Arcade Zone. Arrive and announce it's never a great idea, whether it's your own funeral. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love going to the arcade still, so this would have been a cool article to read. I am not going to read the whole thing here. Crazy Taxi. You talking to me. Yet again, another great game. Um, I love playing at the arcade, so I would have definitely been excited to see this in the magazine. Been like, all right, another reason to get the Dreamcast. Soul Calibur, great game. Sonic Boom Boy, up close and personal with the creator of Sonic Adventures. Wild Metal. All right, that looks interesting. By Rockstar Games, okay. On September 9th, more than 19 shiny new games will be beamed down at, at you at the form of the shiny shell. How will you pick up the winners from the losers of the shining star? From the smelly socks. The Ishtars from the Jurassic Parks. Read on. All right. So your guy. Sonic Adventure. Video game legend runs rings around the Velocity Challenge competitions. Back when Sonic was awesome. Mario vs. Capcom. East vs. West in the Battle Royale of superheroes and tights. Soul Calibur. Bottom line. Five fighting games will be staring you in the face on the ninth. If you can only get one, make sure it's this one. House of the Dead. Bottom line, Sega gives you more zombies per square foot. All right. Flag to flag. A faster, friendlier take on the often stodgy realms of racing simulators. Okay. What do we have now? Kings of Fighter Dream Match 1999. Bottom line, Nirvana for the old school fighting game fans. But compared to Soul Calibur and uh, Virtual Fighter 3, it looks like it should belong in a museum. Ooh. Ouch. Uh, trick style. Bottom line, one of Dreamcast's best-looking games, not for all racing fans, but if, if you're skating or snowboarding is your lifeblood, it's right up your half-blood. Half-life. Yeah, I, I'd i pass. All right, next up. Blue Stinger. Bottom line, often adventure games look like the matted painting compared to this. The Japanese version of Blue Stinger was riddled with s sometimes sickening camera problems. Thankfully, Activision has completely overhauled the aspect of this game. Tokyo Extreme Racer. Bottom line, this is one manacle drivers out there. You know who you are. It's for those who like upgrading their cars, too, but this is hardly a classic. Ooh. TN Hardcore Heat. A rough and tumble racer that's re re reasonably fun and looks cool, too. Monaco Grand Prix. If you absolutely must have a Grand Prix game for launch, this is the one for you. The better, better one's coming along soon. All right. Power Stone. Bottom line, if you have a glimpse in the future of fighting games, look no further. If you want a fun game, it's that too. Hydro Thunder. Bottom line, great fun. Another state-of-the-art coin-op squeezed onto a DD-ROM. Yes. So out of these, Hydro Thunder is definitely awesome. Power Stone is awesome. And Blue Stinger. Sega Sports 2. There's nothing you need to say. 
bottom line for Mortal Kombat Gold, short of a greatest hit collection for Mortal Kombat fans, ain't they a rapidly dying breed? Okay. Uh, Blitz 2000. If you find the rules and pace of traditional football as tedious as playing cards with your granny, then this is the game for you. All right. Ready to run with Boston. Boxy. A great looking game. Pow, pow. Okay. Let's see. What do we got? Incoming game. Release dates of press time. So we have all those games coming out on 9-9. And then there's supposed to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 more games that came out in September. So Arrow Wing, Quick, Quarterback 2000, Rainbow Six, Slave Zero, Soul Fighter, Speed Devils. Now that was awesome. Uh, that's probably why I got the game because it was so close to launch. So, you know, right on launch, tons of games. In the same month, even more games. Um, let's see. October, we had NBA 2000, Sega Bass Fishing, uh, Vigilante 8, Second Offense, Virtual Fighter 3 TD. All right. November, Blades of Vengeance, Fighting Force 2, Sega Rally 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3. That's a great game. Test Drive 6. All right. And then Quarter 4, Climax Lander, Dynamite Cop. That was fun. Uh, Street Racer, NHL Hockey, Red Dog, Take the Bullet, and Toy Commander. And Alone in the Dark 4, coming out in the early 2000s. So, after launch and into September, it gets a little slow for the holiday season. But all those games are still really new. So, they didn't. They had tons of games for Christmas. You didn't want to overload it. So, for the next year of incoming games, if you're a Dreamcast fan, you'd be looking. Uh, Batman Beyond, Castlevania, Echo the Dolphin, Shemu. 2000 that would have been a big game to look for resident evil code veronica looked amazing um when my cousin got that game i really enjoyed watching just the opening trailer over and over and over boulder gates code breaker crazy taxi um Tianami, baseball and basketball so a couple big hits to look forward to in the coming year but not a complete list uh probably would have sold some people and then been a little disappointed in what could come so the hot list we're looking forward to Resident Evil, Crazy Taxi, Shamu, Echo the Dolphin. You know, I still love the Dreamcast one. Uh, Project Ares. Shem you're, lo uh, you're looking forward to Shamu, Resident Evil, Castlevania, Project Ares, and Climax Lander. You're dreaming of Fantasy Star, Streets of Rage, External Champions, Knights, and Shinobi. Yeah, now if those games would all came out for the uh, Dreamcast, it would have been amazing. Finally, we're getting Streets of Rage 4. Lost in Space, Geist. Whatever happened to Geist? Nah, I don't know either. All right, Virtual Fighter 3. I assure you, this is a long magazine. I hope we're almost done as well. All right. We'll kind of pick up the pace a little bit. Sega Rally 2. Ah, yeah, it looks cool for the time. I pass. NBA 2000. Yeah, I pass as well. Resident Evil Cold Veronica, like I said, that game looked amazing. Still enjoyed it. Arrow Wings, eh. For me to play games like, uh, playing games like Arrow Wings, it needs to be in the arcade on one of the machines that moves with it because that really sets the mood. Afterburner, can't beat it. Castlevania Resurrection. Uh, never played it. It looks cool. Hydro Thunder was amazing. Still love that game. Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen it. That's pretty awesome. I love seeing these old ads for movies because then they show you like where you can buy it. Suncoast. I used to love going to Suncoast as a kid. Virgin uh, Place. I didn't even know they had a store like that until a decade ago. Tower, Sam Goody, Record Town. All right. So we got Save Zero, Test Drive 6, some more Sonic. Get a GD ROM included with every issue. I love how they keep wanting to tell you it's a GD ROM. Can't you just say, like, get a disc with e included with every issue? All right, Shenmue. Sega's epic may be a small step for man, one giant leap for gaming. In the briefs, plus ultra-realistic graphics, innovative gameplay that mixes all types of modes into one adventure. It's set in the 80s. Down point. Does anyone really know what this game really about besides Yo Suzuki. It's set in the 80s. Kind of reminds me of um, the new game Death Standing. Is that what it is? Where everyone's like, does anyone even know what this game is? It looks cool, but don't even know what to do. 
I mean, maybe they'll look at that like a new Shamu. Awesome game where you just explore and nothing kind of goes on. You do whatever you want. Ambitious of the scope and promising to be equally impressive in this realization. Shamu may prove to be Dreamcast's killer app, changing the way we play games forever. You know what? It was a great game. It was fun. Too bad it just didn't tra attract more fans to the Dreamcast. Street Fighter Alpha 3, that was awesome. Toy Commander. If you like playing as toy games, you got to play Toy Commander. I recommend it. If you never played Dreamcast, pick up Toy Commander, pick up Shamu, and enjoy. Shamu might feel a little outdated for you control-wise if you're not used to it, but once you play it for about an hour or two, you'll feel right at home and know what you're doing. Toy Commander, you can just jump in and have fun. Sega Bass Fishing, Soul Fighter. Ah, I keep always getting that game confused with Soul Calibur. Because wasn't the first Soul Calibur Soul Blade? <laughs> okay. Stay awake. The only way you can possibly get more out of our website. Introducing the Ultimate Gamers website. GameStop. Yeah. Sure. Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future. It took me years to figure out how to play Echo the Dolphin for the Dreamcast. I mean for the Genesis. And I would have never thought about playing it for the Dreamcast though. I would have just kept playing the Genesis version. Alright. Street Racer. It's no Speed Devils, let's be honest. Vigilante 8. Always fun. Ah, Climax Landers. Isn't that game... Doesn't this become Landstalker? Is that why I don't remember the name? I'm sure that's what that becomes. Alright, they must just change the name. Or maybe it's, I just remember it as a... It says, such as Landstalker and Shadows in the Darkness for the Dreamcast. Maybe they just call it Landstalkers again. But yeah, that looks cool. Dynamite Cop, also fun. Let's see. Midway is ready to rumble. We have Fatal Attractions. Crunch Time. Spray Finish. So they really did a good job showing you every game that was coming out and giving you good detail. This was a big magazine. All right, Dreamcast 101. How big is this magazine? Wow, 126 pages. I mean, I guess it's the first issue for the Dreamcast. So, eh, you kind of have to, you, you'd want this type of issue. I'm going to have to look for this magazine and see if they still have it. Under the hood. So we have the Dreamcast, all the parts, the controllers and accessories. You know, the visual memory, I love the idea, but only one game for me really had anything useful to bring with you. Um, I forget which one it was, but when I, w the one I had, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I wish more games did this. Peripherals, arcade stick. Okay, what do we have here? Sonic Adventures, they look into that. It's still a fun-looking game today. Okay, so we'll speed up a little bit, get through the next couple pages. House of the Dead looks awesome. Uh, summary, fast-paced, light gun, uh, survival horror with tough bosses and some amazing set pieces. Trick styles, yeah, still. Chaos Emblems and more. So they show you the mini games, Adventure Field, ABCs. Alrighty. Dreamcast isn't just a machine, it's a new bread of interaction between gamers. Enter DC Nation. Win. Win an amazingly f I p Yeah, that would have been awesome. Alright, I guess that is the end. Alright, so guys, that's the end of the Dreamcast magazine. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, let me know what's your favorite part of the magazine, what games that what came up for the launch that you'd been excited for, and any memories you have about actually getting the Dreamcast or wishing that you did. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, watch my other videos, and uh, keep on gaming.